Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I just came back from Aaron's Aquatics. His little brackage tank is awesome. Now this guy's only been in the hobby for seven months. So from the seven months he's been in the hobby, I've seen him so many times at the shop, always exploring new fish. He gets bored very easily, so he's going through all these phases. This brackish water tank, this phase I had to film. So I've been asking him for about maybe a month, a month and a half. Hopefully you guys see him again in the future. Uh, whenever his 29 gallon angler tank is up, I'm gonna shoot that. Even though it's a saltwater tank, I think that fish is really cool. Hope you guys like it. It's a brackish water. Not a lot of brackish water videos of high quality are out there. So um, maybe I shot this well, maybe I didn't. Who knows, I still have to edit it. So enjoy. Hey guys, my name is Aaron Late. Uh, you probably see me on Jimmy's channel before. I've been in the hobby for about seven, eight months now, and uh, we're just gonna go over my new 75 gallon brackish tank. Um, kind of go over some of the species we have in here. There is the uh, Mono Argentis, the Mono Sabes, um, a couple figure eight puffers, and a Gymnothorax tile, which is also known as the freshwater snowflake eel, but it is in fact a brackish fish. And as it grows to be an adult, it does go to higher end brackish to marine conditions. So we're just gonna kind of go over and do a couple little species spotlights and highlights of each uh, fish. And hopefully it'll help you guys out with setting up or possibly wanting to set up a brackish tank in the future. Um, right now I am at uh, 1.01 salinity which is kind of like medium to higher level. I do have some Amazon swords in here, as you can see in the video. They are doing pretty well until my uh, scat started kind of biting into them. As you can see, they're kind of yellow and browning, um, but they do and will survive up to 1.01. Uh, they seem to really thrive at 1.05, 1.08. So if you are at the lower end brackish, uh, you can keep these type of plants in there. Make sure you get the marine salt. It is a little bit expensive, but as a brackish tank, you don't need as much as you're doing with salt water and you can still run your canister filter or hang on the backs and it doesn't require all the extra skimmers and things that you need. You need running a ZIS filter on there. Yes, <laughs> yep. I have two ZIS filters in there, um, an Aquatop uh, UV sterilizer filter and on the bottom I'm running a Fluval FX4. So it seems to be doing pretty well uh, with the amount of fish that I do have in here. Uh, eventually, you would want to upgrade to a larger tank uh, with these uh, monos. Uh, the mono sabes do get up to about 12 inches. They're more of a get kind of tall and they're pretty active schooling fish. So you want to make sure that you have enough space and preferably a six foot tank so they can swim back and forth. Uh, the mono argentis, as you can see, the ones with the little yellow on the top and the tail fin. Uh, those get up to about 10 inches and they're a little bit more round than the sabase. In smaller numbers, they do tend to be a little bit more aggressive, so you'll kind of want to have at least six of them. Minimum tank requirements is 125 gallons, but I would preferably put them in like a 150 to 180, so you have the little taller height than the 125. What's really cool about the eels is that they have a second set of jaws in their throat. So you'll see him bite into the silver side and then once he gets it down to his throat, he'll kind of like feed it in through there. You can see off of his nose right there, he has those little nostrils sticking out. That's to help him find food. Most of the day they'll spend most of their time inside of their little cave there and just peek their little head out and kind of see what's going on outside. And then uh, they are nocturnal, so they will come out when it starts. the light starts going down and they'll be typically a little bit more active. Towards the like end of the night, I'll see him like kind of waving his tail outside of his cave and I'll have this like pile of sand in the corner over here. And what he's doing is he's just cleaning all of the feces and everything out of his cave and making sure that it's clean. So the next morning I'll just see all of it outside of his cave there where he cleaned his, his uh, cave and ready to go for his next meal. I just really into the oddball type fish and the color and behavior of them. It's just really so cool. It's just not something that you normally see. But you'll see that little white spot on the top of his head. That's his little angler that he used to lure fish in. And once they get close enough thinking that's a little fish, he'll, he'll bite them. They can actually eat a fish up to their size or two times almost, uh, you know, the size of their body. That's so cool. But it's really cool how they just walk on their bo bottom uh, fins right there across the, the water 
doesn't really swim too much, maybe really, really slowly, but most of the time they're just walking across. Uh, they do say that you can have them in a reef, but you just gotta be careful what type of fish you have with them. If there's anything that does get close that he can fit in his mouth, he will definitely eat it. 